sorry for the small lecture hall. Uh, considering Dr. Bharat's popularity, we should have had in a larger lecture hall. That's what uh, uh, our vice chancellor was telling me. Uh, but we wanted him to visit IBB and uh, spend time more with IBB students so, and health sciences just in front of this, show him the interdisciplinarity uh, in biology of what we work in. Uh, students, can you just sit here in front, you know, instead of standing, just be comfortable in front. Come over. Yeah, there are a few chairs and girls. Come over. Come. Don't stand, just uh, occupy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, on, on behalf of all of you, uh, Actually, I uh, take this opportunity to uh, welcome uh, Professor uh, Bharat Agarwal. Uh, I'll introduce him in brief because it is impossible uh, to really uh, tell everything about him in such a short time. Uh, but uh, every one of you have heard term tumor necrosis factor. And he is the one, actually, who characterized TNF-alpha and TNF-beta first. So let's give him the big hand. I was wondering uh, why his name is Bharat. My name is Bhushan. <laughs> and he was telling me he actually was the first in their family who came from Pakistan he was born in India, and that's why he was Bharat. <laughs> Dr. Bharat Agarwal, uh, you also may have heard another uh, name called Genentech. Genentech is the world's first company that introduced us term biotechnology. Genentech is the first company uh, that was considered, or that is considered today, as biotechnology company, you know. And uh, he was the first recruit of biotechnology uh, company, Genentech. And he will tell that story uh, later, so I won't uh, take time for that. So he's also called as uh, cytokine man. Some people call him as turmeric man. Some people call him a spice man and uh, whatnot, you know. When I, you look at his CV, I was absolutely aghast, you know, when I looked at his citations. Professor Bharat Agarwal is an institution by himself, you know. I have not seen many institutions, even all institutions put together, having citations close to 90,000. Bharat Agarwal with... <laughs> H index of 167 today and 90,000 citations has created so many records during his distinguished academic career. And I'm so happy that he has accepted our invitation. Uh, he's actually giving a talk at uh, Molecular Oncology Conference happening in Pune uh, today and tomorrow, and he could find time. I'm also thankful to the uh, visionary uh, presence of uh, our Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Uh, Vasudeva Gade. As you know, any university's character is recognized by how their leaders are. And our university leader attending academic lecture is one of the very unique characteristics among present Indian universities. So I'm very happy that uh, he has agreed to come here and share today's session and will offer a presidential remark at the end. Uh, as you know, Dr. Gade himself is a renowned biotechnologist, uh, giving inspirational leadership uh, to the academia in the university. And Dr. Agarwal, uh, with these efforts, today Pune University has been ranked on number three by Times. So global rank of number three. Uh, uh, 
and we know that this is not enough, you know. So uh, he is on continuously uh, after the faculty to improve quality of research and lectures and visits mm -hmm. of eminent people like you uh, remain one of the major uh, inspiration to all of us. You know? So I welcome you uh, for this session and I would like to really invite you here uh, to give your uh, talk. Professor Bharat Agarwal, please. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, the Vice Chancellor for being here to listen to me what I have to say. Second, I would like to thank uh, the Head of the Department of Biotechnology for being here. And lastly, but most importantly, I would like to thank Dr. Bhushan Patwardhan for inviting me. And if he did not invite me, I will not be here. So I would like to thank him. And even more importantly than that, I would like to thank all of you for being here. Again, if you guys were not here, I will not be here. <laughs> so thank all of you. So having said that, uh, I just uh, come from Houston and uh, it just so happened that I was in uh, Los Angeles before that for a, a lecture and the whole lecture was on integrated medicine that how to combine modern medicine with ancient medicine and uh, this is something is a very big revelation in America and America is gradually waking up as you know that no country has a more uh, deep culture than India does and I tell people very openly that man without a culture is a vulture and India need to be very proud of it India need to maintain that and as long as India does that, I think there won't be any problems. I must tell you at the same time that I went to America almost 45 years ago. And today, I'm going to share with you that what I have learned in all these 45 years. And the bottom line here is that no country has more cancer than America. No country has more obesity than America. No country has more diabetes than America. No country has more Parkinson than America. No country has more Alzheimer than America. And yet, most of the people that you run into India, at least in the educated circle, they think America has a cure to everything. And that is ironic. That is ironic. And the fact is also that as India is becoming more and more and more Americanized, the cancer is going up, the obesity is going up, the diabetes is going up, Alzheimer is going up, everything is going up. So the choice is yours, whether you want to remain Indian or you want to become American. <laughs> and I'm sharing with you the knowledge of last 45 years. Okay. And uh, I've been working with the MD Anderson Cancer Center, which is the biggest cancer center in the world. We see 2,000 cancer patients every day. And, and it was about 20 years ago that MD Anderson decided they are losing too much money. So the president of MD Anderson made a statement that we will never have a cure to cancer, therefore it is a good business. Therefore, it is a good business, which means that convert MD Anderson into McDonald. 
and he made that public statement. So what does that mean? Open MD Anderson everywhere in the world, just like McDonald is. And this is where he, I brought, he came with me to India. We signed an MOU with, with the Tata Cancer Center. As you know, Tata is the biggest cancer center. And we stayed in a five-star Taj Hotel, the older Taj Hotel, right at the gateway of India, with the president of, India, uh, of MD Anderson. And, and we were taken to Elephanta Caves and this and that and signed an MOU and paid all business class airfares. And now we have signed an agreement with 50 different countries and we are McDonald of, in, of MD Anderson. So you put the name MD Anderson and you take a 50% profit away and under that umbrella. So we moved from $600 million to $4 billion. MD Anderson now is a $4 billion business. And now what MD Anderson is doing, every other cancer center in America begin to do the same thing. So finally, this president retired. His name is John Mendelson. You can look him up. He retired about three years ago. We got the new president, and he came from Harvard. And what he promised that John F. Kennedy, some of you might know who John F. Kennedy is. He came to Houston and he went to Rice University, which is a part of the medical center. And he made a statement in 1962 that we are going to go to the moon. And we ended up in the moon in 1965. So our current president did exactly that, that we are going to cure cancer within the next five years. Previous president said we will never have a cure to cancer, therefore it is a good business. New president came in, we are going to cure cancer in the next five years. So he calls Moonshot Project for Cancer Cure. Moonshot. So now Obama has taken over Moonshot. You again look it up. And so three years are already over. So he has two more years to cure cancer. So what is he doing? He said every pharmaceutical company in the world, they need a patient to test their drugs. We got the patient, they got the drugs. Let's shake hand 50-50. It's a business. It is a business. So billions of dollars are rolling in just from pharmaceutical companies. Just imagine. Question is, who is gaining? What is happening to the patients? And there are more people dying of cancer than ever before. So having said that, mind you, I just took a retirement from MD Anderson. And I think we need to think out of the box. And what I, we think need to think out of the box is sitting right here. And that is we need to go back to the traditional knowledge. We set up an institute called Anti-Inflammation Research Institute in San Diego. And I'm going to s express you my opinion. I have 161 slides and I have a 60 minutes, 50 minutes left uh, to complete. And the basic thesis that I'm going to communicate with you, and I can provide you as much masala. I begin to use this masala word even in America, and uh, I think now they begin to understand. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm going to provide you as much masala as possible in terms of convincing you that virtually every chronic disease known to mankind requires inflammation, and inflammation means fire, and that includes cancer and everything else, and that is what is pitta in Ayurveda. And if you can control inflammation, you can control every chronic disease. And that's what all my 160 slides were. I presented 250 slides in Los Angeles, and they gave me hour and a half. And that's why I asked you in my email if I could have an hour and a half. N you said, no, it is, will be very difficult. So I cut down to 160, but I'm going to quickly run it through just to give you the gist. 
and, uh, and I can go on and on, but as I said, anything and everything that I'm going to try to convince you is just one sentence. That inflammation, 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 causing the disease, controlling inflammation is controlling the disease. Having said that, I think it is very important these sentiments exist even in America. And this is the book that I happened to discover very recently called Less Medicine, More Health. And there are seven assumptions that drive too much medical care in America. Probably it applies more to America, but it begin to evolve even in countries like India as well. And you have to look it up and, uh, and it, it's not surprising. It's very, very, very important. By the way, my slides are available to each one of you. As far as I'm concerned, more people make use of it, the better. So there is an absolutely no patent, no, nothing there that, uh, that uh, in there that I cannot share with you. So it is absolutely no problem. So these are some of the seven assumptions. I will not have the time to go through each one of them but I suggest that you really read, okay. And another one, which is called overdiagnosis, or what they call early diagnosis, causing the disease. Treating things which are not even a disease. And here are examples. If you did not do early diagnosis, this is the number of deaths. And if you did the early diagnosis, this is the incidence of thyroid cancer but the death remains the same, okay? And here is the same thing for lung cancer, same thing for breast cancer, same thing for prostate cancer. And they are treating things, the tumor can be either very fast or very slow or non-tumorous at all. I mean, things are not even tumorous, they are treating. Things are indolent, you do me no harm, I do you no harm. But moment you go to a doctor, doctor will start shooting chemo, radiation, everything, and now the guy will pull all the bullets out. Now the gunda is, has woken up. The gunda is out there to get you. So you better get ready. 90% of the people who die of cancer, they die because cancer has metastasized, either into brain or to the lung or lymph node or uh, other vital organs or bone for that. So, so moment you start shooting the guy, he immediately will go to an area where you, you, the doctor cannot reach so easily. And that's the end of the patient. And everybody need to know that. Okay, so these are all the various cancers. Here is another guy. Firstly, he happened to be black. That's a bad thing to be in America. Second thing, the good thing is, he is a chief medical officer of the American Cancer Society. And he can open his mouth, which people don't like. And he spoke the truth. And here is the truth. How we do harm to our patients. Okay? He has come under the gun a lot of times. Okay? So, again, I recommend you to look it up. And then, uh, whatever I'm going to tell you today is that one of the ways to treat and to control most diseases is that it is the mother that brings us in this world, and it is the mother nature that takes care of it. And mother nature has already de designed the kind of medicine that we should be going after. And 80% of all drugs have their roots in mother nature. And this year's Nobel Prize went to the mother nature. Artemisin. All of you are familiar. And the name of the woman, Tu, means you. Tu, you, you. Okay. That's her name. And where did she find this medicine? 168 BC. And it's called King and she isolated a compound called artemisinin. And that's what she got in all the world. 
So you can imagine. Elephants. So immunity. This is immunity is another journal which is very, very, very prestigious journal. With the impact factor over 30. And here you can see this whole issue is about fires. And where these fires are coming from? Cytokines. Cytokine is the word that we introduced way, way, way back then. There was a word before we got into it called lymphokine. Anything produced by lymphocytes will be called lymphokine. Anything produced by mo monocytes will be called monokine. But what if it is neither produced by lymphocytes or, or monocytes? What it will be called? So that is the time me with the other, the whole other group designed the word cytokine. And that's why I called my lab Cytokine Research Laboratory. Anything that is produced by the cell now is called cytokine. And this fire is caused by cytokine. And the whole issue is about cytokines and inflammation. That how cytokine causes fire. So we have done a review, signaling pathways of the TNF superfamily, a double-edged sword. Remember, God makes something for nothing. I tell my wife, you know, if you eat two chapatis, you feel good. Now all of a sudden you eat, start eating 10 chapatis. Feel bad. So same chapatis, same thing with the fire. Fire is not bad. But as long as the fire remains under control, everything is fine. But the moment fire gets out of control, it can burn everything. And same thing with the TNF. As Dr. Patwardhan mentioned, we discovered TNF. And same thing with TNF, that one end of TNF is good, other end of the TNF is bad. So without TNF, you don't have an immune system. And we all need immune system. So TNF is a very important part of the immune system. And I remember coming, we discovered TNF in 1984, and I came to India in 1985, and I talked about TNF, and they said, what the hell is that? I mean, that was the you know, kind of response from people. And so, so this TNF now is a very important part of the immune system, yet when it gets out of control, it can cause havoc. Like you heard of all autoimmune diseases. TNF blocker have been approved by the FDA with a market over $25 billion a year. Billion. Even statin drug market is nowhere close as TNF blockers. And, and they are all antibodies. And they all have a black label warning, which means if you're coming to a country like India, they will make, doctor will make you stop taking TNF antibodies. And they cost $20,000 a year for the rest of your life. And I discovered Haldi can do just that. And I'm going to show you. And all the blockers have to be injected. They are not orally bioavailable. And I wrote an article Haldi as an orally bioavailable TNA blocker. Says it all. Okay. And then I did another article, historical perspectives on TNF and its super family. 25 years later, a golden journey. And when I say a golden journey, I don't just mean 25 years. I also mean turmeric. I also mean Haldi. That journey ends with Haldi as blocking TNF. And I talk about all the mechanisms and how it does that. Golden journey. So here is a, a Time magazine, the secret killer, inflammation and heart attack, cancer, Alzheimer, and other chronic disease. And depending on where the fires are burning, whether in the brain, or joints, or lung, or lymph node, it can cause disease. It has a different consequence. But it's all fire, same fire. So here is the controlled fire. You have a kitchen. You go in there. You turn on your stove. You, you make your tea, coffee. You turn it off. Here is a, your living room. You have a controlled fire. You know, you warm up your living room or bedroom. But same fires, 
getting out of control. Uncontrolled fires. And what causes these fires? Lifestyle carcinogens are risk factor. Tobacco, all of you know, radiation, alcohol, diet, obesity. They are all causing fire. And so we wrote an article, cancer is a preventable disease that requires major change in lifestyle. So 30% of all cancer due to tobacco. In countries like India, 40%, 50%. The number is as high as 50% of all cancer due to tobacco because here people not only smoke tobacco, but they also chew on tobacco leading to oral cancer. And so you get rid of tobacco and I don't see any reason why not to get rid of tobacco, why government is not doing it. Half of the cancer is gone, just like that. Half of the cancer, give no option. Make it a, like a, you know, drug, you know, a, you know, so anyway, so make it totally illegal. When I say drug, meaning illegal, you know. And uh, so get rid of tobacco. Diet, 35% cancer due to diet. 14 to 20% obesity. 18% infection. 7% environmental pollution and radiation. And 5% due to genes. And if you push your number very hard, this might become 10%, but no more. And yet all the NIH money, which is billions and billions of dollars going into fixing the genes, they have not been able to do it and they will not be able to do it. I can guarantee you the writing is on the walls. That's why all the money is going down the drain. All the money is going down the drain. So here is now even MD Anderson trying to cash in Reduce your risk of cancer by 30 to 40 percent by adapting healthier eating habits. They are advertising. So, so the, where this inflammation is coming from? Environmental pollutants, food, grilled food, fried food, red meat will cause this. Virtually all the bacteria, without exception, will cause fire. All the viruses linked with cancer cause fire. Cigarette smoke, stress. Stress is another thing that is going up exponentially in, uh, in even countries like India. Everybody is under stress. So there is a stress you can manage and there is a stress that you cannot manage. And the stress that you cannot manage leads to fire. It has been shown again and again that stress can cause cancer. Okay? And there is a pH, hypoxia, heavy metal, chemotherapy and radiation. Supposed to treat cancer patients, causes fire, makes cancer metastatic. Ultraviolet radiation, alcoholic beverage. So, so this is our working hypothesis. Disregular chronic inflammation caused by lifestyle factors mediate chronic diseases including cancer. So it was this gentleman, Rudolf Warshaw, in 19th century Germany, who was the first one to define inflammation as a redness, swelling, heat and pain. So whenever you have inflammation, you have all these four features. And he was the one who linked inflammation with atherosclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, cancer, asthma, Alzheimer, you name it. And he also introduced the word for inflammation called ETs. Somebody says, oh, I have arthritis. All they are talking about inflammation of the joint. Bronchitis, inflammation. So wherever this word ETs appears, you can see it is inflammation of the various organs. So as of today, there are 250 different kinds of ETs. Somebody say, oh, I have a colitis. So you don't know, doctor said I have colitis, but you don't know what it means. All they're talking about inflammation of the colon. Gastritis, inflammation of the stomach. Hepatitis, inflammation of the liver. So wherever this ETs appear, it means inflammation. Now you know. And it is, these are the agents that causes ETs. And here you have a bronchitis. 90% of the people who come down with the lung cancer, they have a bronchitis. Here you have a hepatitis leading to liver cancer, cervicitis leading to cervical cancer, colitis leading to colon. So wherever this ETs is appearing, lead to cancer. So this, 
you can see that how inflammation leads to cancer. So there is a master switch in our body. We discovered TNF in 1984. There is a guy, David Baltimore, he got the Nobel Prize. He discovered this nuclear factor, Kappa B. Okay. And in 1986, and then in 1989, he was the first one to report TNF is the most potent activator of NF kappa B. So as of today, NF kappa B activation is a major mediator of inflammation in most chronic diseases, including cancer. And if you were to inhibit NF kappa B, you can prevent and delay the onset of chronic disease. So every medicine that I'm going to talk to you about that every Ayurvedic formulation or here or there or fruits or vegetable, everything that is inhibiting NF kappa B. Therefore, down regulating the disease. So this NF kappa B, as of today, has been shown to regulate 500 genes. And I plan to put all these 500 genes on one chip. And you can see how many genes are turned on, on in any human being. 500. Even TNF itself is regulated by NF kappa B. So all the, even HIV regulated by NF kappa B. Everything. So you have an inflammatory biomarker. You can put all that in one chip and you can look at it in urine or saliva and measure it. And then you can give a trifla or this or that and see how, where do they go? Are they going in the right direction or not? So here is TNF activating NF kappa B, activating IL-6, activating STAT-3. And NF kappa B can lead to survival of the tumor, can lead to chemo resistance, chemo radio resistance. See, as we are sitting over here, my hope is all of you are peaceful. You know, shanti, shanti, shanti. But if you are under shanti, your NF kappa B is not active. It is sitting in the cytoplasm quietly. However, Moment you get angry, moment you get mad, you know, moment you lose your temper, your NF kappa B immediately gets activated and goes in the nucleus, bind the DNA, cause the gene transcription. It has been shown. Any kind of stress. Okay? So, in a guy who has a cancer, NF kappa B is permanently active. You don't have to do anything. Permanently active. So you can bring down that NF kappa B, you can control cancer. So it, so it is required for the survival of the tumor. They give a chemotherapy. Chemotherapy activates NF kappa B, lead to chemo resistance. They give a radiation. Radiation activates NF kappa B, lead to radio resistance. It is involved in the proliferation. It is involved in angiogenesis. It is involved in invasion and metastasis. It is involved in bone loss. And all the bone loss, Genes are regulated by NF kappa B. You can inhibit NF kappa B, you can inhibit bone loss. And I'm going to show you zillions of examples. So, so here is even I mentioned chemo causing NF kappa B activation, radiation causing NF kappa B activation. So if NF kappa B is so important, drug industry realize, hey, NF kappa B is a very important target. Why not we target NF kappa B to come up with the new drugs? Because they are smart guys. They are not that dumb. So they have come up with inhibitors. And those inhibitors will end up either with NIB, which means it is a small molecule, okay, or it will end up with MAB, which means it is antibody. And I'm going to show you zillions of examples of all those NF kappa B inhibitors the drug industry has come up with. Okay, so here is, remember I told you that if you are peaceful, your NF kappa B is not on, but if you have a, if somebody has a cancer, NF kappa B is on. And here are all the different cancers, tobacco linked cancer, carcinogen induced cancer, virus induced cancer, you, NF kappa B is permanently active. And so NF kappa B addiction and its role in cancer, one size does not fit all. What does that mean? NF kappa B addiction. That means the tumor is addicted to NF kappa B. Moment you inhibit NF kappa B, tumor will die. 
It is so addicted. And then I say, one size does not fit all. Which means the reason NF-kappa B is active in one tumor is different than another tumor. Which means if the drug's doing something over here, it's not going to do something over there. And so these are the various pathways that lead to NF-kappa B activation. So drug industry, because they, you know, what we have learned over all these years, most, I will say 99% of all diseases are multigenic. They are not caused by single gene. So therefore, by inhibiting single gene, you are not going to cure cancer or any disease. And every drug given by mother nature is, is multi-targeted. And every drug designed by the man is a mono-targeted. Remember that. So therefore, the chances of working is very little. So whenever my friend uh, Subhash Pade is not here, he used to be the head of the Department of Chemistry. And so uh, over here in Pune University, and he is the one who is designing, you know, analogs of curcumin, which is very, very high affinity and very, 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 very specific. So more specific you get, more high affinity you get, more narrow the window for you to work on. More narrow the window. And that's what drug industry does across the board. They make it very high affinity inhibitors, and they make it very, very specific. Therefore, it doesn't do anything. OK? So here is NF-kappa B. Is it needed for this transformation of the cell? It is needed for the survival of the tumor. It is needed for the proliferation. It is needed for invasion. It is needed for angiogenesis. It is needed for metastasis. And it takes 10 to 20 years to go from here to here, another 10 years to go from here to here, which means most cancers begin at the age of 20. They are manifested at the age of 50. You try to tell 20-year-old, hey, don't smoke. Hey, don't drink. He said, who the hell are you? I can do whatever I want. I have my freedom. But by the time he reaches 40 or 50, he has become more wise. But it's too late. Cancer has already taken off. And that is exactly what is happening. So when you go to a doctor, or oh, doctor say, oh, you have to go through chemo and radiation immediately. Hey, what the hell? Cancer was there yesterday. You did not know it. Today you know it. So why you want to me to rush? Give me a window of opportunity to try out other things. It did not happen overnight. 20 to 30 years. The beast is growing, but you did not know it. OK? So here is NF-kappa B, as I mentioned, is a very important part of the immune system. Without NF-kappa B, you don't have immune system. So you don't want to permanently shut it off. Just like TNF, I mentioned, very important part of the immune system. So is NF-kappa B. Whatever NF-kappa B does through TNF, and whatever TNF does through NF-kappa B, they you know, promote each other. And so it is needed for all these responses. Yet when it gets out of control, all this disease, even something like aging, nobody considers aging as a disease. But as we get older, NF-kappa B comes up, and all the chronic diseases start surrounding it. And there are people in called Okinawa in Japan where they have used, we, have, we were the first one to show that Haldi is the best known NF-kappa B inhibitor. And I'm going to show you. And so Japan, they are already doing the clinical trials with Haldi to extend the lifespan. And they have shown that in a number of different models that Haldi can do that. Okay. So here is the, we were the first one to show that cigarette smoke activates NF-kappa B and induces COX-2. And we were the first one to show that cigarette smoke induced NF-kappa B activation is persistent. That means if I have smoked a cigarette today, I can take a blood sample 24 hours later, I can tell by looking at NF-kappa B, this guy is just smoking a cigarette. Now we have gone up to even four days. That means it is there to do damage even up to four days, even one puff of cigarette smoke. So, and there, as I mentioned, 90% of the people who come down with the lung cancer, they're cigarette smokers. 
So the question is that what happens to NF kappa B in those people? So we looked at it in humans, people with lung cancer, normal epithelium, hyperplasia, squamous metaplasia, donor dysplasia. These are different stages of cancer. And as you can see, this brown color is NF kappa B. As disease gets more and more advanced, there's more and more NF kappa B. Make things worse. Obesity is another one. 14% of the cancers in males, 20% of the cancers in female are due to obesity. And America is, as I said, is the number one most obese country in the world. And India, now you see a lot more obese people than when I was growing up. A lot more. Okay, so these are all the various cancers that have been linked with obesity. And so here you have a hypothalamic inflammation which is N means N of kappa B, leading to overweight, glucose intolerance, hypertension, H. And N of kappa B, a pivotal transcription factor in chronic inflammatory diseases, a new N of kappa B in cancer development and progression. Just to show you that whatever I told you is not just my sentiments alone, these are the sentiments of the other people who are working in the field as well. And we have written N of kappa B, the enemy within. This is within us, okay? And or NF kappa be a friend if it remains in the immune system, but it can become a foe moment it gets out of the immune system. NF kappa in cancer, a matter of life and death, okay? So here you have a stress, NF kappa B, inflammation and cancer. So nearly 43% of the patient with ulcerative colitis, which means inflammation of the colon, okay? will develop colorectal cancer after 25 to 35 years. You know, God gives you so many opportunities. But if you don't listen to your body, it is your fault. So that means somebody who has ulcerative colitis will very likely develop colon cancer, but he has a 25 to 35 years to get his acts together. And if you don't, it is your fault. And again, if you look at the incidence of ulcerative colitis, Japan is 7.9 per 100,000, India is 44.3 per 100,000, and US is again taking the lead out of everybody, 229 per 100,000. So a fire, so basically what comes down to, we need a fire extinguisher to control the fire, which means how to suppress NF kappa B activation safely. Safety is very important. Because a lot of people can come up with a lot of drugs. I mo mentioned you, the drug industry has come up with a lot of drugs, but they are not safe. And when it comes to any disease treatment, safety is number one and efficacy is number two. Okay. So here is the drug that uh, dr drug industry has come up with. And here is called Avastin. And here you can see ending up with a MAB here. And it gives you 0.3 month overall increase in lifespan and $1.2 million. Now you tell me, unless you need, happen to be Ambani, or like Ambani, who can afford that? And there are a lot of Ambanis in India now. Okay, I keep hearing. So those are the people coming to MD Anderson to get this drug. Our drug industry coming to you, India here to supply the drug, as long as you can pay this kind of money. But this is the increase in lifespan. Here is erlotinib, tarsiva, nib, again, small molecule, 0.3 month increase in lifespan, and $659,000. And wonders of modern medicine. The title of the article is Biological Targeted Cancer Therapy and Marginal Benefits. Are we making too much out of too little? or are we achieving too little by giving too much? And the guy who wrote the article, David Parkinson, he used to be my colleague in MD Anderson. Then he left MD Anderson to be vice president of uh, Novartis. And after 20 years when he resigned, he wrote this article. So insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Okay. So we need to think, it's a food for thought. Albert Einstein. So neutralizing tumor, promoting chronic inflammation, a magic bullet. And Lisa Cousin, she used to be my colleague. Actually, she was a technician there. Now she is the head of the department and director of a cancer center in Oregon. And she wrote an article in Science. 
And again, that here you can see curcumin, resveratrol, and all these things to control inflammation, what she has to say. And so I, the NIH, all of you know NIH, National Institute of Health, they invited, they had a workshop on inflammation. They invited only 20 people from all over the world to discuss inflammation, how to control inflammation. So they invited specialists in steroids, NSAIDs, Celebrex, metformin, statin, and they invited me to come up with the natural products to control inflammation. But the beauty of the whole thing is that aspirin was discovered 100 years ago. And it was discovered from this plant. Here you can see willow tree. And it was discovered as analgesic. As of today, it can control inflammation. It can control pain. It can do so many other things. And they are, and here is a steroid, fenugreek. All of you know what is fenugreek. Carl Jurassi discovered this steroid for, called diastjanin, and way back in 1915. And Indian people have been eating dia this uh, fenugreek for thousands of years. Okay, and here is a statin, the first statin that where was discovered. Here is a metformin, the first metformin that where it was discovered that is used for diabetes. And now they are using all these things for cancer. So we wrote an article, Cancer Drug Discovery by Repurposing, Teaching New Tricks to Old Dogs. <laughs> okay, so here is a dog that is being taught the tricks. So if you were to regularly do drug development, they, they think it takes one to two billion dollars. Okay, and takes 15 years. But if you were to do repurposing, and as you can see, you can do very, 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 very quickly. So now they are prescribing aspirin for myocardial infraction, for cancer, for ischemic stroke, for a hemorrhagic stroke. And a lot of doctors, they themselves are taking aspirin, what they call baby aspirin, 60 milligram every day. But even aspirin has a lot of side effects. Okay, and here they found that there's a 58% increase in certain type of cancers. Even that is not safe. Okay, but they are still taking it. So aspirin for cancer, metformin for cancer, statins for cancer. So to treat and prevent most chronic diseases, we need to dial down. You know, God makes 23,000 genes. And each gene in our body has a role. So, but when that gene becomes a gunda, gets out of control, normal gene is no longer normal. You need to dial down because it, it is dialed up. So you need to dial down, but not turn off because pharmaceutical industry knows only to turn off the gene, okay? And then it will have a lot of side effects of multiple genes, not a single gene. Am I clear? Multiple. Drug industry simply doesn't know how to go about multiple genes. So Sloan School of Management and at MIT and Harvard Business School has created what's called farmer's market. But what we really need is a farmer's market to control all those genes. The solution is that simple. And, and this is com quote coming from New York Times. Okay? So, and this is called farmer's market. Okay, so you have fruits, you have spices, condiments, vegetables, cereals, and here is a bigger farmer's market. Remember I mentioned that we have a, put 900 different kind of foods in this book to make people know that what is out there, all the different vegetables, all the different pulses, all the nuts, all the cereal, most Americans do not know, never heard of it. Okay. And you will say, garki murgi dal barabar, you know. I mean, you already know, but you will not respect. <laughs> okay? And this is not the end of it. Look at that. These are all the fruits. Okay? And these are all, all these spices. And you know, Vasco de Gama and Christopher Columbus, even way, way, way back then, they were looking for spices. One went this way and discovered America. And that became India. Other went this way and discovered India, India. But that's what they were looking for. And so when the solution is simple, God is answered. It's that simple. Again, Albert Einstein. So and everybody, I don't know about India, but in America, how much time I have left? I'm sorry? Oh, good, great, thanks. <laughs> so uh, as you know, everybody, uh, in America, 
who has to get a medical degree, they have to take a Hippocrates oath. Otherwise, they cannot get a medical degree. I don't know if it is true for India or not. It is? So, and this is the, that oath. And Hippocrates came 5th century BC. And it is that guy who said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. There's a guy, David Eisenberg, at Harvard. He teaches people how to cook. He gives cooking classes to the medical students. Complete change in thinking. India has not caught up with that. Now most housewives do not cook. They rather go out. Oh, I'm too busy. Or nobody trained them. And this guy is sitting at Harvard teaching his medical students how to cook. You might have heard of Dean Ornish. He is another big guy from University of California, San Francisco. He teaches people how to cook. Because that's where the solution is. But firstly, you have to believe it to do that. If you don't believe it, I'm going to help. And this is, again, same Hippocrates. So now they are introduced the term pharmaceuticals. <laughs> Just imagine. Anything to cash in. OK. So refers to medically valuable compound produced from. And this is our pharmaceutical. So these are the things we have identified in our laboratory and published close to 700 papers where we have identified spices that can control NF-kappa B. We have identified various Ayurvedic medicines that can control NF-kappa B. We can have identified various fruits and vegetables. We have identified things from traditional Chinese medicine, and we have identified from various other sources, like cashews and so forth. Cashews are going to hurt you. But if I can demonstrate that it can control NF kappa B, I got it made. OK? So nobody in the world that I know, and it's not my ego talking, that there are 70 different compounds that we have identified from each one of them that can control NF kappa B. And I'm going to give you a glimpse of it. And these are the 70 compounds. And the list is constantly getting longer and longer and longer. And we know exactly where in the pathway these things are binding and how they are turning off all the cancer-causing genes. As I said, cashew is not going to hurt you. But we have proven what is there in the cashew that is controlling NF-kappa B and that is controlling cancer and provide all the mechanisms. And same thing, trifla. Again, I don't have to tell you. So here is resveratrol. Again, there are people with a very twisted mind that who want a to uh, resveratrol, they rather go to red wine, okay, to get enough resveratrol, and they have to drink, a, you know, 1,000 liters of red wine to get all the dose. <laughs> but this is how their way of justifying it. And uh, here is a polygonum cuspidatum, was the Japanese plant where the first resveratrol was originally identified. And it is the richest source of resveratrol, even as of today. And you can see there are so many other sources you can get resveratrol. I mean, mungfali, you know, peanuts is very, very, very popular over here. Why not eat peanuts? Why do you need to drink red wine? But as long as government approves it, so therefore, why not drink red wine? Same thing now becoming a, that uh, cannabis. Cannabis is becoming a very big deal in America, and uh, it is approved already in 10 different states. We had a conference in, uh, in Seattle, you know, on Spokane in Washington, 
and uh, the uh, on American uh, medicinal plants, the whole conference, and 50% of the presentations were on cannabis, and people getting high and uh, and uh, on cannabis. And you can imagine, you know, I remember going to school in Banaras, and uh, there is a area outside BHU called Var called uh, Lanka, that where you could get burfi, you know, as a dessert with cannabis in it. Okay, I mean, so 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 point of the matter is here, people use it for recreational purpose, and there now, whole America taking over cannabis. And government approves it. Government approves it. The worst part is government approves it. And if government approves it, then everything is all right. OK? So here you can see. So here is indole 3 carbino is another one. And here are all the sources. And it is, again, very familiar to you. The block and F kappa B. Here is tocotrino. That you heard of tocofro as a vitamin E, but probably not heard of tocotrienol. So I wrote the article, the vitamin E of the 21st century, its potential against cancer and other chronic diseases. So what is tocotrienol? So here you can see this is a tocopherol, and this is a tocotrienol. Tocopherol, 37,000 publication. Tocotrienol, only 1,100. The only difference is this has a three double bonds that are present in tocotrienol, which are missing in tocopro. And there is alpha, beta, gamma, delta. That's it. OK. But we found gamma tocotrienol, but not tocopro, will inhibit enough capability. So the whole world will work, uh, go after tocopro. And I happen to get my degree, PhD, from University of California, Berkeley. And I happen to be in a, a building called Life Sciences Building. And that was where tocopherol was discovered. And it was discovered there as a sex factor. What does that mean? That if your diet lacks that uh, tocopherol, that person will become impotent. And at that time, the only vitamin that was known was up to vitamin D. So the guy said, oh, so vitamin D is already known. Why don't you call this as vitamin E? And that's how the name came about. And till today, nobody knows that how tocopherol acts as a sex factor. Nobody knows, mind you. But here is a tocopherol that will inhibit NF kappa B. So here you can see this is NF kappa B. Tocopherol has no effect at all. Tocotrino completely. Inhibits. And so if it inhibits NF kappa B, does it work against cancer? And here you can see we, pancreatic cancer is one of the most lethal cancer. The only cancer that is more lethal than pancreatic cancer that I know is a gallbladder cancer, which is a, occurs a, not in America, but in countries like India, it is very common. Okay, that is more lethal than even pancreatic cancer. And so I forgot to mention you that tocotrienol, again I cut down another uh, about 100 slides to, you know, to take out the sources of tocotrienol, palm oil. Palm oil is the palm in Malaysia. Most of my this research on tocotrienol is funded by Malaysia, palm oil board. $70 billion economy of Malaysia is controlled by, by, by uh, palm oil. $70 billion. So they are funding our research on tocotrienol. And that's where this, this comes from. Palm is one of the richest source. OK? So here we showed that tocotrienol will, will inhibit pancreatic tumor and sensitize them to gemcitabine, which is the standard treatment, by modulating the inflammatory microenvironment. We provided all the evidence. OK? So here is a Google steroid. Again, I don't have to tell you much about Google and that we found the same thing with Google. OK? This was uh, another steroid that was uh, isolated from Google. And here is a Boswellia serrata. So I'm going to quickly show you, my time is running out, but uh, I'm going to show you the depth of the information that is out there. Here is a Boswellia serrata, which is called Salai Google. And I am told that Jesus Christ was buried with the Salai Google. 
and that's why they use it in a lot uh, in incense and everything and uh, in the churches okay and this is a sala also called frank incense and this is the active component and here we show that flux and narcapa and here is a vetanolate again nobody knows more about vetanolate than all of you do it is also called ashwagandha and again we were the first one to show that blocks and narcapa here is a long pepper the harvard group uh, published uh, uh, the screen 500000 compounds as anti cancer agent and they came up with only one and that is a long pepper they could not find a cancer that it could not kill both in vitro and in vivo piper langumi and raj lakshmi uh, uh, raj lakshmi is the first author on this paper published in nature you can look it up okay every cancer without exception and they also found that this compound was 10 times more potent than even paclitaxel. Just imagine. So some woman has a breast cancer and the doctor said take paclitaxel, here is your option. And you can look it up. All the information is there. And even that we showed that that compound is working through nf kappa B. We provided the mechanism. And we showed exactly which residue it binds to and how it inhibits an alcohol. Sorry. Here is uh, nobody knows more about neem than all of you. And the botanical name of neem is Azad Drakht. Azad means freedom. Drakht means tree. Azadi Raktika. And here is Azadi Ron. Another compound from neem again the same thing and so from exotic spice to modern drugs and here is a paper published in cell the global demand for more affordable therapy and concern side of economy use drugs are refocusing interest on eastern traditional medicine particularly those from india and china and this is what we're talking about spicy and nobody knows more about spicy than all of you and here is Vasco de Gama, May 20th, 1498, looking for spices. And this route is called spice route. Okay. And this is what he was looking for. And we have a book called Healing Spice. It's already a bestseller. Over 100,000 copies are already sold. And it's already translated into German, already translated into Italian, and uh, very soon to be published in Spanish. Healing spices. We talk about each one of the spice one by one. Okay. And we have another one, molecular targets and therapeutic uses of spices. Fifty different spices. And American people have a very hard time comprehending. Okay. And here is, you can see, this is curcumin coming from turmeric. Here is a cinnamon. You see the structural homology, one half of curcumin. And here is a black pepper. You see the structural homology. Here is a ginger, ginger oil. You can see the structure homology. And here is a clove. You can see the structure homology. Here is a, a, this a licorice. You can see the structure homology. So we have a paper targeting inflammation-induced obesity and metabolic disease by curcumin and other nutraceuticals. Every target in, in uh, obesity can be targeted by this spice. Multi-targeted. Okay, curcumin getting back to our roots. Okay, so this, this is the actually it is not a root, it is a rhizome that gives rise to this. Again, all of you are very familiar. And this was isolated 200 years ago. 200 years ago by Germans. Okay, curcumin was. And this is what gives the yellow color. And so as of today, there are 1186 curcumin analogs. 195 molecular target, not single, 195, okay? And 9,000 peer-reviewed publications. When I started, there were less than 50 publications, okay? And 489 patents, okay? And 176 varieties of curcumin. Just imagine. I happen to be, uh, you know, in uh, Thailand, 
and they, they gave me black haldi. Hey, what is this? You know, and apparently they use it to induce abortion in women. I mean, most people never heard of it. I happen to be in Chitrakoot, again I saw a black haldi. So point of the matter, they are all here. And nothing much known about other species. So pharmacological basis for the role of curcumin cloning is age-old spice with modern targets. And here we are put on the cover of trends in pharmacological sciences. You can see this down my camera. And here is in South India, the no marriage is possible without haldi. And here you can see. And here, now I discovered I was coming here in Pune. I found even a temple here in Pune that I will like to visit. It is absolutely fascinating. You know, I mean, I, to me, it is mind-boggling, and I would like to go check it out. You know, all the every, look at this. <laughs> this is all Google, downloaded from Google. You know, look at this. You know. I think it is absolutely amazing. So, so here is the, we were the first one to show it blocks NF kappa B, okay? So, and you, you can see this was in 95, that was the beginning of this whole thing about curcumin and, and here are all the cancer causing gene down modulated. I don't have the time to go through, but you can see that you can, anybody can look it up, read up, and here are nobody, I challenge you, nobody has found a cancer that curcumin cannot inhibit, mind you. And here are all the cancers I have outlined for you. Okay, without exception. Okay, and here are all the molecular targets, inflammatory molecular targets that curcumin is inhibiting, without exception. Okay, single compound, designed by Mother Nature. And nobody, you know, I mean, I've been working on curcumin for almost 25 years, and I say to myself, more I know about this molecule, Lesser I feel I know, and it is mind-boggling, okay? And these are the protein that curcumin physically binds to, physical interaction. And when people talk about bioavailability, I tell people when you have it, 200 lovers, you know, you walk in a room, you are not bioavailable. But you know, if everybody hates you, you are 100% bioavailable. So people talk about bioavailability of curcumin. So there are over a thousand publications to increase the bioavailability. And they have done a more harm than good. Whatever designed by the mother nature is still the best. And maximum that it, you can do is put haldi in milk, which is again Rishi Muni's new for thousands of years, and they have done it. And there are two casein and lactoferrin in milk that physically bind to curcumin. And then there are lipids around and increases the bioavailability. It has been shown. So all of you know that, but people in the Western world do not. Okay? So I'm allergic to this, I'm allergic to that. So therefore that goes down the drain. So therefore they don't use it. So here are, so, and then, the, you know, depression. Depression, as you know, is a very big problem in America. And it is a, you know, becoming a bigger problem in countries like India. And lithium is one of the, thing that is used for depression. It has been used for a long, long, long time. And so the one of the mechanism, if not the only mechanism, lithium works, is there is an enzyme called GSK3 beta, that lithium physically binds to GSK3 beta and inhibits it. And it is believed that is one of the major mechanism how lithium is working against depression. And turn out, curcumin it has even higher affinity than lithium for GSK3 beta. It is picomolar amounts affinity with GSK3 beta. So it is up to you to make use of it. Sorry. So TNF blockade, an inflammatory issue. I mentioned you double-edged sword. And, and here are TNF blockade, $20 billion a year market. It is used for Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, all these diseases it is being, it is approved by the FDA. Okay, and these are the various antibodies that are being used for the, you know, and it is approved by the FDA. And these are the various diseases as of today that TNF has been linked with. So you can imagine, they're all pro-inflammatory. And so, and that, uh, that, but 
FDA gave a black label warning. That means all the drugs that are available, they have a side effects, major side effects. And that's why they call it black label. It causes lymphoma, causes infection, develop resistance, causes this syndrome, it has to be injected, causes cutaneous T cell. Hey, why do you want to take something that has so many side effects? And still it is selling for $20 billion a year. So the, uh, the rheumatologists in America, they all got together, so they invited me to give a talk in uh, Los Angeles. And, uh, and I gave a talk on curcumin as a TNA blocker. And all the rheumatologists are so excited. And they all wanted to know where to get hold of curcumin. <laughs> and then the question is for whom? For themselves, not for the patient. <laughs> not for the patient, for themselves. If they start giving to the patient, they lost their job. They want it for themselves. So curcumin and orally bioavailable blocker of TNF and other pro-inflammatory biomarkers. Here we showed all the mechanisms. You can look it up. And here, remember, if cell culture or animal models was an indication of any disease, every disease will be gone. You know that. We can treat anything in animals. We can do anything in cell culture. They are not good models. If they were indication of a disease, every disease will be gone. So therefore, we want to know in people, what, have, what does curcumin do in people? Does it block TNF? And here is a clinical trial that came out of uh, uh, Hyderabad, and they used N is equal to 21 patients here, placebo. And here is a 23 patients. They gave 150 milligram twice a day, eight weeks. You can see curcumin at TNF level before, after before. So there's a lot of evidence, and this is just one of them now, to show that curcumin will block TNF, not just rat and mice, but in human. To date, more than 65 human clinical trials of curcumin, which include more than 1,000 patients have been completed, and as many as 35 clinical trials are under. And these are the, the timing that from which how many trials that were done. And here are all the various pro-inflammatory diseases that curcumin has been tested. So you can imagine. And here are all the authors that I just put it out, 120, and this I was doing it on the plane, putting together as of 2015, that 120. Okay. And these are all the links if you want to learn up more about this that are available. And the first clinical trial reported in 1937. And that reports way back 1748, and it was in Lancet. You can imagine. Okay. And curcumin bioavailability, how big is the problem? I already mentioned you. And here they just labeled curcumin with the I-125, and they just monitored in the blood, thyroid, heart, lung, liver, spleen, kidney, muscle, brain. It is everywhere. So within a matter of minutes. And curcumin is a fluorescent. Just like a Vishnu Sahasrana, there is a curcumin Sahasrana. Just imagine. And each one of those names tells you different properties of curcumin. The Madhu Nashini. The Madhu means sugar. Nashini means destroy sugar. And curcumin is fluorescent. Ratri Manika, that's another name of curcumin. Pitambra Dhari. Pitambra Dhari is Bhagwan Krishna. Pita means curcumin. Ambar means clothes. Dhari means wear. Who wears haldi stained clothes is Pitambra Dari, Bhagwan Krishna. Okay? Yuvati, which keeps you young. That's another name of curcumin. So, anyway, so curcumin itself is a fluorescent. You don't need labeling. So, what MIT group did, they just took a straight curcumin. It ends up in the brain in 30 minutes. It binds to amyloid protein, prevents segregation. And here you can see brain is lighting up. Whole animal. And they can see the disappearing without any labeling. Okay. And uh, so there is a company called Indina in uh, in uh, in Italy. So they came up with conjugated curcumin with phosphatidylcholine to increase the bioavailability. If anything, if a regular curcumin, you can see it is more bioavailable than the Marina. Opposite, and yet they are making money because they patented. Okay. And here is a yogurt, I already mentioned you, simplest way to increase the bioavailability is a, is a yogurt or milk for that matter. 
that is already published. And here is a clinical trial for colorectal cancer. You can see pre-post disease biomarkers published from Sharma from, uh, from England, Leicester, and uh, clinical cancer research. You can see it is down-modulated. And if they use too much curcumin, they did not see that. So that's another very amazing thing that the effects are very dose dependent. Going higher dose does not necessarily mean it is in your favor. And people don't feel, they're totally puzzled. They do not understand. Okay, so it's a dose dependent. And here is another one, FAP. This came from John Hopkins. Only five patients, but you can see the disease biomarker. Here is another clinical trial, ulcerative colitis. And this is the sulfasalazine is the standard drug. They did plus minus curcumin, and you can see the difference. Here is another clinical trial for colorectal neoplasia, and you can see the difference. This came from Chicago. Here is another clinical trial for tropical pancreatitis, and you can see the difference in the disease biomarker. Here is another clinical trial for prostate cancer, and here they are looking at the PSA, and here is the PSA less than 10, and here is the greater than 10, and you can see the down modulation. Here is another clinical trial for orosa mucous fibrosis, and here they use whole turmeric. And you can see that uh, disease biomarkers are down modulated. Here is a urinary mutagen in uh, smokers, and again they could see the, the 1.5 gram for 30 days. They could see the, a great difference. Here is a clinical trial, 126 patients, 360 milligram, three times a day. And within 10 days, they could see the reversal of body weight, down modulation of TNF, up modulation of apoptosis, and up modulation of P53, down modulation of BCL2, uh, up regulation of BAT. All the right things. And here is the clinical trial that we did in MD Anderson, and curcumin down regulus NF kappa B unrelated gene patient with multiple myeloma. And here is the NF kappa B. You can see by 20 weeks we could complete it down modulate NF kappa B. Here is another patient in 12 weeks we could complete it down modulate. Here is another clinical trial for advanced pancreatic cancer that we did in MD Anderson. And here is a, a gift of time. You can see that uh, a phase one clinical trial. And here is the tumor before, here is the tumor after. This is pancreatic cancer. And this is, we already published it here in uh, clinical cancer research. Here is another clinical trial that, uh, again, uh, that uh, came uh, recently, and it, this was done with Mariva. Again, you can see the disease biomarkers are uh, down-modulated. Here is, I happen to be giving a talk in Bulgaria, and one of the physicians came to me, and he's treating his patients with curcumin. And he provided me this data that uh, for cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, where he's topically applying curcumin, you can see that after some time. Very dramatic difference. I mean, if you can achieve this kind of results, much more you want, okay? So I'm talking about even designing a Band-Aid, you know, that where you simply you can apply and so that you don't have to worry about it. So here is a curcumin for arthritis and clinical trial, and here you can see, see C-reactive protein down-modulated for recumin arthritis. Osteoarthritis, you can see that here is another osteoarthritis, you can see here is another osteoarthritis patients, and again, disease biomarkers that they looked at. Here is a psoriasis clinical trial, and they changed the name of curcumin to Soria Gold. So there is a woman, Madeline Hang from UCLA, and this is applying before, and this is after. And you can see even the dates. And she's already selling curcumin, so, uh, this curcumin under the name Soria Gold. And so, and she's charging $80. You can go on the Google and put in $80 just li this little cream. And here is a disease biomarker down module. And this is what that cream looks like. And now she's recommending for psoriasis, acne, kytosis, acne, what, all these diseases. Okay? And uh, so, you know, all of you may be thinking she's making a fool of you. She is, but it is just a matter of who is willing to buy it, you know? And, but she's making good money, so much, she's making so much money, she decided to resign from UCLA and just run, run this operation full time, you know. So, so that's what this is. And here is a uvitis, is another one, 106 patients, 600 milligram, 80% of the patients responded. Okay, and here you can see pre and post. And, uh, and here is a, a NCI, National Cancer Institute from America, coming up where the countries like India, where the spices are consumed, this is the amount of spices, and the incidence of cancer in male versus female. And here, country like US, where spices are not consumed, incidence of cancer in male versus female. Not from me, coming from the NCI, telling you basically what the spices are good for. And here is a cancer by cancer. You can see this is the US per million, this is the death in the U.S. This is India 
the cases and deaths. You can see for yourself. But these numbers are reaching this way and is on the increase and you don't want that. And people need to wake up. Okay, sooner they wake up the better. So here, a uh, Journal of National Cancer Institute wrote about us, spicy approach to cancer treatment, curry compound fight cancer in the clinic. And here we have been uh, labeled by Scientific American as a spicy la. okay? And here is, I happen to be in, in uh, Istanbul and uh, was invited to give a talk. And I'm standing right ho here in fr front of a spice shop. And my wife calls me Bharat. And this guy who is the owner of the shop got very mad. Hey, why are you calling him? Bharat, Bharat is over here. He said, no, that's my husband. How could that be? In Turkish language, Bharat means spices. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> <laughs> so probably in the olden days that whenever they wanted spices, they came to India, they came to Bharat. And so they changed the name of country uh, for, for the spices as to Bharat. So is it a coincidence or is it a luck? So bottom line is add spice to your life. And here are all the people. I don't do any, anything. I was telling Dr. Patwardhan that uh, I just uh, excite people about, uh, about uh, my idea. And these are the people who are the drivers, OK? They are the one who do all the work. And uh, I thank uh, all of them. And uh, I thank all of you. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful treat. Thank I'm you. sorry time was not less and also many people had to stand. Uh, actually, we will have some question answer. Already there is a delay, but I don't want you to go without our young students asking you a few questions. You know, just 10 minutes, uh, very sharp question answer session. Any questions? The bioavailable, <laughs> if not over here, <laughs> even after I leave. So my, my email is bbagarwal at gmail.com. So if you don't get the chance to ask questions here, feel free to write me and I will be more than happy to respond. Actually, turmeric is what you said is really tip of the iceberg. I really think there that. There are so many such gems sitting in our uh, knowledge uh, database. Yeah. Uh, but we need uh, more uh, Bharats uh, like you to take one after the other. Uh, exactly. I think that uh, it needs to be brought to the modern medicine to the yeah. you know, people that are out there. This but is everything is here. Absolutely. Everything this is here. This is the way to go forward, not that uh, closing our minds and saying, no, no, our forefathers have done it and we don't have to do anything. We have to put science in our uh, traditional wisdom and take it further to the next generation. This is the way. He has actually shown us a way how to take uh, this evidence-based approach, how to use science, and how to really, from simple-looking thing, you can really manipulate and manage the complex of the complex condition and curative way on which we are trying to go and follow the Americas is not the right way. You know, we need to that is shortcut the that and is not the again. Uh, yeah. You are absolutely right. So I think that's why we created an institute, Anti-Inflammation Research Institute in San Diego. I took a, a retirement uh, from uh, MD Anderson and uh, in transition to moving to San Diego. And I think that uh, if uh, you were to follow the American way, you will end up in the same part as where they are. Any questions? Or you can uh, catch him while we are sure, also, sure. because it is uh, late. I will uh, request uh, uh, Professor Gade to give his uh, remarks before we close the program. I don't want to take too much time, but uh, let me thank Professor Bharat Agarwal for that excellent talk. I mean, the cancer, everybody knows about it, and the many people make it very, very complicated when they teach cancer or when they talk about cancer. But the highest level of science, he has explained it in the most simplified manner. And I'm sure each and everyone sitting over here has understood each and every word that he talked about it. The science should be taught like this. Okay, however complicated that must, that may be, 
but our faculty should bring this thing and make that topic so simple that people understand it and they appreciate it. This is how the students learn it. So I thank you very much for making it so simple. But at the same time, you also understand that how important is our traditional medicine. He has, served, he has done a great service to Indian traditional knowledge base by explaining into the, to the world the importance of these spices, okay? Which we have been practicing, we have been using it, and we have been studying it also so much. There are so many people working on bioactive molecules, including curcumin and so many. But the problem is that they initiate it in some small ordinary journal, they publish it and they stop it. They never go into the details the way he has explained. Complete molecular level study, structural base, application, everything. If you do that, then it becomes a complete study. Then only uh, 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 it becomes really a, a, a product or a drug for that matter. So this is how the younger uh, researchers must follow the path. And I'm sure he will be available for the students uh, so that they can interact it. And uh, 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 in fact, I have, Saroj, I have requested him to be with us as a part of our GAN program. So I'll be very happy you, uh, you to come over here, spend some time with us. So uh, that way the interaction can go on. But it's very important for the students that uh, they listen to such type of uh, uh, lectures again and again. And I will request Professor Bhushan Patwardhan that let this be a sort of a trend of a distinguished lectures. At least one lecture of this type we have, uh, uh, you know, initially maybe every month or something like that, and we increase the fre frequency and uh, organize at a larger audience. I think it will be a good thing. So let us uh, do that. But thank you once again for your excellent lecture. Thank you.